Now that we covered uh, the classification in brief, let's get into some more details. And let's check this example here. So um, after we specified for this case, the neurological level, the um, oh, well, first the sensory level, the motor level, and then the neurological level of injury, now we move on to specifying whether the injury is complete or incomplete. So let's take a look at this lower part here. Okay. And we need to specify whether the injury is complete or incomplete. So we look at the row of S45 and we see noon. So this means that this is complete injury. Okay. After that, we move on to specifying the Asia impairment scale. Immediately after deciding that this was a complete injury, then by default, this would be AJA. The uh, other classifications, the incomplete injuries, are the ones that we need to think of whether it's B, C, D, or E. Okay, so this is complete injury. It means it's aja A. One important thing to uh, determine after we decided that this is complete injury is what we call the zone of partial preservation. And what the zone of partial preservation means, and here if we go back, it's this last part of this lower uh, row here, zone of partial preservation. The zone of partial preservation is used um, with specific types of injuries, and the goal of it is to determine the segments below the neurological level that have any type of sensory or motor function. Okay, so first we need to know when do we specify the zone of partial preservation. We only determine it when we have complete injury. So if we see noon at the lower uh, row here, the S45 row, then we need to specify the zone of partial preservation. That's the first case if we check here. Okay. The other scenario is if on the uh, S45 row, if we don't have voluntary anal contraction, so it's an N here, then we specify the motor zone of partial preservation. Basically, there is no motor function in S45, so we need to specify the motor zone of partial preservation below the level of the injury. This is for the motor part. Now for the sensory part, if the patient does not have deep anal pressure, and in addition to that, does not have light touch or pen prick on the, say, the right side, then we specify the sensory zone of partial preservation on the right. If the patient does not have deep anal pressure, and at the same time does not have light touch or pen prick on the left, then we specify the sensory zone of partial preservation on the left. I advise you actually to pause the video here and go back to what I just mentioned and read what's on the slide here to understand, make sure you understand when we specify the zone of partial preservation before we move on to uh, examples.